best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, the Perching, Perch P, Perchington, Perch, Perch Perchington the fourth. Uh, Perch, dear Perch Perchington, writes this viewer. Have you been noticing the amount of weird tweets tweeted by Marvel creators to mess with Spider-Man fans who keep saying that they want them to undo one more day or saying the current status quo is terrible? All tweets I'm going to mention are going to be sent uh, with an email as links or screenshots. And sure enough, this does have a lot of uh, links and screenshots, so we'll put some of them up. Uh, for starters, Nick Lowe, the senior spider editor, uh, has tweeted about how issue 18 of his failing Amazing Spider-Man title, I don't know if it's failing, but is getting a second printing, making fun of the people who say that it's failing without realizing Amazing Spider-Man is one of the comics that will stay sell no matter uh, what and can easily get second printings. A couple things on this. No, uh, Amazing Spider-Man is not guaranteed to sell, although certainly more than almost all the other comics. It's, it's got that built-in kind of draft that it, it can use. Um, but uh, the kind of, this is where I'll, I'll, I'll make comments and irritate both sides. The uh, second printing is uh is largely a lot of crap and people know it and uh, you're, as i said i don't know months and months ago uh you're gonna see more second printings because what's happening is the publishers this is 100 percent true are uh you basically keeping their orders a lot tighter than they used to and so when you keep orders a lot tighter than you used to and then you know final order cutoff comes or these these uh, ask for reorders come in it's hot it's you know it's it's less likely that there's the inventory to supply it. So you're going to get more second printing. So I'm seeing a lot of people like, oh, comics are doing bad. Then why are there so many second printings? Yeah, because you're printing fewer of the, the first run. That, that's why. That's It's not a big mystery. It's not a big secret. And it's not even a big shame. I mean, I would argue it's a good idea for comic publishers to keep the run tighter and to not have a lot of excess industry in um, inventory. That's not a bad idea. It's a, good for you. You're managing your stock. That's good. Um, but, uh, using it as some kind of gotcha, uh, tends to be done by dumb people. And so I've, I've seen, I have seen a lot of people up there like, oh yeah, let's get a second printing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you short your print run by 10,000 copies from what you were doing a year ago, and then you, uh, you need to go back for a second printing. That is not an own on the fans. If I take the first printing and the second printing and add them up and compare them to three years ago, um, you know, you're still net negative. It's just how math works. But but anyway, uh, back to the uh, back to the mail. Um, it says then on the 24th of March, Nick Lowe, Joe uh, Carmanga, Zach Davidson and the animation director, Thomas uh, Atsuk, have attacked fans by using a screenshot written by someone, maybe made by one of them. We're, we're, we're fully into conspiracy territory right here. Uh, talking about how the letters they get from fans and how they only publish letters that say Spider-Man comics are great and that Peter and MJ don't belong together. The funniest part of all that is that Zach Davidson called the people that want Peter and MJ married weirdos that want their headcanon to affect the comic, which is ironic considering Spider-Man has been married for 30 years from the 60 years of history in Spider-Man comics. Yeah, I, well, we'll get to all this in a second. I, this this war against people, uh, well, I have some, some feelings on that. Which will probably, by the way, if, if you're thinking, oh, is Bird's really going to, so you got to really admit the truth. This may be one case where we are in alignment, but uh, but let's finish the mail. It says, there are also podcasts and creators who don't work for Marvel, like Bill Walko um, took Twitter and the podcast to attack the fans as they are friends of Nick Lowe, produced podcasts, went to interview him and Spider-Man creators. A lot of people are trying to suck up to the uh, comic book people who are negative or hate crowd. Pick me, pick me. I'm the person you want to be doing your comics, which is really what it's all about. Uh, have definitely latched on to the idea that uh, the Spider-Man MJ war is not just fans asking for things. I mean, never mind that the headcanon of Kitty Pride is gay or Iceman has been gay all over, all that kind of stuff, all that kind of speculation. That's perfectly fine. That's just an enthusiastic, committed fan base. No problems, nothing to see or barely an inconvenience. But fans who go, hey, you know, for uh, for nearly half of Spider-Man's uh, published history, he's been married and I like those comics. I'd like to see those again. And that, you know, Spider-Man, uh, where Spider-Man was married to Mary Jane and kind of uh, Secret Wars was, uh, you know, that was pretty great. We like that. Sold well. No, those people are toxic hate fans, part of a white supremacy movement. Sure. Yeah, that makes all sense. Um, we finish. It says, yet he and his coworkers and friends keep attacking the fans. Now, in fairness, the tweets are kind of rude and mocking. I, I mean, 
I'm I think we we jump too quick to what is attacking the fans. They're being jackasses, no doubt about that. But you know, I think we need to reserve. You know, I, attacking the fans. I don't know. They're just like, oh, the, listen to all the losers. Yeah, I mean, it is an attack, sure, but there's different there's different levels. I, I personally, for me, you can say attack the fans. You can say acting like a jackass. They both they both amount to about the same thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, they don't care. No, that's not giving air cover to creators. It's just saying I. I, I'm try- I would love it if the temperature overall uh, attack the bands, worst possible thing ever, you know, hate group, all that kind of stuff. Just, everybody could just ease off that a little bit, you know, just like a bunch of fans saying, hey, we don't like the current direction of comics does not constitute a hate group. Likewise, I think an editor acting like a jackass is not necessarily an attack. But, but I mean, I'm arguing semantics of words. You're welcome to your own definitions. It's fine. No, no, no issue there. I'm just I, I would I would like just overall the uh, the. Uh, that that level of dialogue just just ease back a little bit and be nice, but but whatever. It says yet he and his coworkers and friends keep attacking the fans. If they don't care about the fans and what they say, uh, why do they attack them? Um, because it's uh, in their mind, it's funny. Also, do you think they get a lot of emails anyway? In my opinion, social media made them get less mails, so that's why they get more mails that love the run and hate it. Assuming that Nick is telling the truth, which I doubt. Have a good day and please read all the tweets I send you because I left stuff out. You can see for yourself and I want to further uh, hear your thoughts on them. Note, fuck Arby's. Yep, no problem at all. So yeah, a lot of tweets here um, from various people. And the tweets are, um, it's it's what you'd expect. It's like uh, bullying and harassing on Twitter because you don't like a comic book does not lead to editorial changes. And, you know, th- so somebody writes, does a 10 to 1 hate this to like it ratio actually get through to you. I know you cherry pick the letters you publish in the editorial as well. Your majority audience should be taken into account versus a minority that actually agrees with the Peter and MJ can't be married crowd. And I would say, look, uh, you can argue it any which way, but if you go to cons, you go to comic stores, you look at things, I would say right now, I'd bet my life on it that there are more fans who would prefer them married than not. I do believe that that is true. Um, so, you know, um, we could say whatever we want, but anyway, the response, and this is kind of this, this tone that the person's getting to, it's why the temperature being just too hot is a bad problem. No, it does not. Bullying and harassing on Twitter because you don't like a comic book does not lead to editorial changes. That would be ridiculous. By doing that, you're causing people to write off your opinion as nutty. So bullying and harassing. So somebody saying, does the 10 to 1 hate this to like it ratio, meaning hate the uh, the split of Peter and Mary Jane to like, does the 10 to 8 ratio actually get through to you? That's bullying and harassing. And, and to me, like, come on. I mean, you may not be, you may not like somebody disagreeing with kind of your take, but come on. And then people jump at The more you ask, the less likely it is to happen. I'm sorry, that's a shit attitude. You, you know, at least maintain the illusion that fans asking for things, um, you know, matters. Um, you know, people saying, is this the best Marvel can do? Um, you know, with, uh, you know, is that, I mean, that's bullying. We, we, bullying and harassing is saying, is this the best Marvel can do? Really? Saying there is a tiny segment of the fandom who feel immensely empowered by social media? Oh, hell no, my friend, Zach Davidson. That's all. It's all of social media. The entire aspect of social media is is believing that they're more empowered. All of them, not tiny. There's a tiny section of fandom. No, that's a tiny section of fandom that you like to attack. And by the way, if I'm glad you said a tiny section of fandom because when we're all about uh, you know comics or a group, and there's a massive white supremacy problem and hate problem in Twitter. You know, massive problem does not equate to a tiny segment of fandom. So which is it? The tiny group of people that are a problem, or is a massive group of people that are a problem? You decide. But uh, they think they can. They think the ability to tag a major company can get people fired or force their personal head cannons. I just hate it. I hate this entire uh, dialogue of of how this all works. Look, um, Peter and Mary Jane were married for a long time. It was a very popular pairing in comics. It was. I, I people still like it. Again shocking you can choose to go in another direction you own the characters but what you can't do is sit there and go i i, I have no idea what do these people are who like this stuff come on come on that you're 
nobody nobody buys it. And then when people argue for it and you label it as bullying and harassing, what are you doing? So I, that's why I say I, you know, I'm taking umbrage with attacking the fans, although in many ways that is what is happening here. But why 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 do you want to label it that way, Marvel editors? Why do you want to label it as you know, I like Peter and Mary Jane better. Stop bullying me. What? What are you even talking about? That's ridiculous. So, for what it's worth, you know, uh, people have asked from time to time, and I'll, I'll throw it out here. Why is Marvel so determined not to have Peter and Mary Jane? Why, why do they keep trolling and screwing with the fans? Well, uh, I think it comes down to two reasons. One, I think a lot of people who are writing the comics are not fond of marriage and hate the fact that a major character is in a perfectly normal heterosexual marriage. I have, I, I have put, put it this way. I, I had enough conversations where people bemoan the idea of Spider-Man being married, you know, that he's old, he's frumpy. It's, it's that they view marriage as, you know, that one step before death. Spider-Man's going to move out to the suburbs and, you know, he and Mary Jane are going to get involved in an HMO. And I mean, it's like, that, that's, that's how they view marriage. Unless the marriage is, uh, you know, the engagement is announced on Twitter and, and photos are on Instagram and, you know, it's done somewhere in a, you know, barn with a, with a bunch of wheat, then that's a perfectly okay marriage. I don't know. The idea of a traditional, you know, white wedding dress, uh, Peter Parker, Mary Jane marriage, traditional thing is like, uh, ick. it's poison to people. So Anyway, be that as it may. Um, the other thing uh, is that Marvel has decided, uh, somewhat as a, as a group, the editorial group for sure, has decided that this is the hill they're going to die on. That, you know, they, 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 they just, they do not, absolutely do not, cannot, under no circumstance, give in to fans. That if they, if they you know, have a marriage, if they do this kind of stuff, it is, it, it is them is giving in and they cannot do it they cannot you know they the, the fans can't win and i've heard that expressed a lot too like hey even if we would you know even if we think it's a good idea and i've heard by the way writers say you know we we i pitched getting the marriage together undoing the mefesto thing and you know that would probably be a huge sales pop an editorial told me or just from two different writers writers who do not know each other so i do not believe that the, the story is spreading i've heard them tell me directly um yeah, but if we did that, these fans would feel so entitled, we'd never hear the end of it. Can't do it. Can't do it. We cannot give the fans what they want. They would, they would just be entitled, and they would, they would then demand more things. And I find that whole perspective bizarre. Yeah, uh, definitely some people would walk around like jerks. Guess what? They, you have a job at Marvel. They don't. So who cares what they say? And if these people that you're worried about being jerks our jerks on social media, you know, newsflash, they're jerks now. So nothing's going to change there. The only thing you're giving up is a pop of sales. Like, I, I understand it's hard. That's why a lot of people have the last word syndrome, why a lot of arguments and things go on in social media and people fight. But look at it this way. You work for Marvel. You get a paycheck for Marvel. In theory, you might get a bonus or a promotion if your comic sells real well. A large number of the fan base does want this marriage restored. If you do it, that comic is going to sell huge. It absolutely would sell huge. It would sell huge for the people who wanted it to happen. It would sell huge from the people who you know are just interested in how story lives move forward. It would sell huge from speculators and collectors. That that is you know your your fastest title, two hundred fifty thousand copies plus would be you know restore the you know, horror issue or else drag it out for a year series. Uh, the restoring the Spider-Man Mary Jane marriage with a bunch of variant covers and all that other shit, do it. You you'd sell you'd, you'd sell a massive amount of comics. But uh, yeah, some people online would then brag that the uh, you know hey our bitching finally got it done. You'd have to see that on Twitter. But here's what would keep you warm at night: you took all of their money. Yeah, you'd have some jerks there claiming that uh, they they got you to do what they wanted. And you'd be like, ah, you're right. I guess I'll just have to slink away with my pockets full of your cash. I, I don't know. That seems like a pretty good trade to me, but uh, but what do I know? Anyway, uh, I, 
I don't know. I find this, I find it absurd for sure. Uh, for sure. I think it's stupid. And I don't, I, this, this idea of like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, put it in the fan's face that you can't bully me to get Spider-Man. I mean, I said in other videos, you know, what's worse apathy. And when you act like this and you, uh, you know, browbeat your customers with them saying you're, they're, they're bullying and harassing by saying, I would like this uh, storyline that existed for 30 years to be restored. If, uh, if that's, if that's your take, the next step for those customers is apathy. And that's where they, you know, good news. Your timeline's going to be a lot more peaceful because no one's going to write to you. Or it's art. Only the sick fans are going to write to you. But as we've seen, the sick of fans, the people who are writing in who are, uh, I love everything you're doing. Yeah, they're stealing your comics. That group seems far more uh, aligned to just pirating the books. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, again, it's your company. You can do whatever you want. I just find this so self-destructive and stupid. It's uh, This is the definition of an unforced error. Thanks for listening.